Good morning, everyone. Daily Jesus, day 62. We are reading through Hebrews chapters 4 to 6. Chapter 4 of Hebrews tells us uh, that those who are trying to return to Judaism because of the persecution, uh, it reminds them, uh, it reminds those people that who they truly should fear is none other but God. God is who we should fear. And it also teaches them that true rest only comes from believing in Jesus Christ. Chapter 5, it tells us that Jesus is the high priest appointed directly by God and that there can be no forgiveness of sins apart from Jesus. Chapter 6, it offers us a warning to those who are still conflicted between Christianity and Judaism. It says that if they leave Christianity and return to Judaism, it will be the same as crucifying Jesus again. Let us read the passage together. Hebrews chapter 4 Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us fear lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. For good news came to us just as to them, but the message they heard did not benefit them, because they were not united by faith with those who listened. For we who have believed enter that rest, as he has said, As I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Although his works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he has somewhere spoken of the seventh day in this way, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works, and again in this passage he said, They shall not enter my rest. Since therefore it remains for some to enter it, and those who formerly received the good news failed to enter because of disobedience, again he appoints a certain day, today, saying through David so long afterward in the words already quoted, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken of another day later on. So then, there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works as God did from his rest from his. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest, so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight. But all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Chapter 5 For every high priest chosen from among men is appointed to act on behalf of men in relation to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is beset with weakness. Because of this he is obligated to offer sacrifice for his own sins just as he does for those of the people. And no one takes this honour for himself but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not exalt himself to be made a high priest, but was appointed by him who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a high priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications, with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him, being designated by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. About this we have much to say, and it is hard to explain, since you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, since he is a child. But solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. 
chapter 6. Therefore, let us leave the elementary doctrine of Christ and go on to maturity, not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards, toward God, and of instruction about washings, the laying of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. For it is impossible in the case of those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift and have shared in the Holy Spirit and have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the age to come and then have fallen away to restore them again to repentance, since they are crucifying once again the Son of God to their own harm and holding him up to contempt. For land that has drunk the rain that often falls on it and produces a crop useful to those for whose sake it is cultivated, receives a blessing from God. But if it bears thorns and thistles, it is worthless and near to being cursed, and its end is to be burned. Though we speak in this way, yet in your case, beloved, we feel sure of better things, things that belong to salvation. For God is not unjust so as to overlook your work and the love that you have shown for his name in serving the saints, as you still do, and we desire each one of you to show the same earnestness to have the full assurance of hope until the end, so that you may not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. For when God made a promise to Abraham, since he had no one greater by whom to sway, he swore by himself, saying, Surely I will bless you and multiply you. And thus Abraham, having patiently waited, obtained the promise. For people swear by something greater than themselves, and in all their disputes an oath is final for confirmation. So when God desired to show more convincingly to the heirs of the promise the unchangeable character of his purpose, he guaranteed it with an oath, so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled for refuge might have strong encouragement to hold fast to the hope set before us. We have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, a hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtains, where Jesus has gone as a forerunner on our behalf, having become a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Amen. Amen. Let us go through the discussion questions. As we learned in chapter 4 that true rest only comes from believing in Jesus, let us re reflect where do you find uh, and look for, uh, for rest? If you are looking for rest from other sources than Jesus Christ, why is that the case? As the high priest, Jesus has already forgiven all of our sins on the cross. If we truly believe in the forgiveness of sins, how should we deal with the temptation of sin in our lives as well? Just as we... Um, saw the people were conflicted between Judaism and Christianity. What about you guys? What are you conflicted between in today's uh, lives? And lastly, what resolution of repentance and, and decision of faith does Jesus want you to come to after reading today's passage? Uh, let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, that you are our great priest. Uh, that through you, true peace and rest can be found. We find comfort in knowing that true repentance can only come through you, Jesus Christ. So Lord, I pray that as we live today, that we look to you only for our sin problem. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Embrace Jesus. Embrace people.